they were comparing cameras. I want to make this short and sweet. So I'm talking about the key elements, but before that, I'm actually going to explain what the key elements is. Sensor. The bigger the sensor you have, the better image you will have. Megapixels. The more megapixels you have, the more details you will have in the shot. ISO, how the camera handles light, specifically in low light situations. Eye focus, if you feel that getting sharpness around the eye if you're photographing a portrait is important, then eye focus is a must. Focus points, the amount of focus points you have, the easier time you'll have of tracking a subject. Screen, if you feel that, you know, composition, framing is super important, then how a screen tilts, it's essential. Photographs per second. The more photographs per second you have, you have an easier time of getting that shot. Video, the quality of the video, and also how many frames per second it can film in. The more, the easier time you have of slow motion clip, for example. Card slot, whether it's single or dual, Battery life, well, if the battery dies within 3 hours or 12 hours, it's important. The only difference is if you have a battery that dies out quickly, you just need to carry around more batteries. Price, the most important thing of all, where is it within your budget? What will you get out of with that money? And last but not least, image stabilization. Image stabilization is very important in a camera because it reduces camera shake. Huh, Canon, Nikon, I think you've come to your senses that mirrorless full frame is the way to go. Welcome. No, but <laughs> honestly, I'm not a Sony boy, but I mean, full frame mirrorless cameras are just, you know, it's the future. And Canon has brought one out, Nikon has brought one out, and Sony has had them for a while. I'm just pointing it out, okay? Um, no, but today I'm comparing the Canon EOS R the Nikon Z6 and the Sony a7 III. And I'm not just comparing them, I'm more talking about each camera, what they are good at, and then sort of coming to a conclusion which one I would choose myself. All right, so let's, well, you know what? Let's do it. Let's start off with the Canon EOS R. So, the stats for Canon EOS R. You have a sensor that's full frame. You have 30 megapixels. ISO 100 to 40,000. Eye focus, yes. Focus points, 5,655. Screen, fully articulated. Photographs per second, eight photographs per second. Video, 4K with 30p. Full HD, 60p. Card slot, SD single. Battery, 370 images. Price, $2,299. Okay, I'm pointing a few things out. ISO, you're never gonna go at 40,000. 6,400 and beyond that, you're having noise. You don't want noise. The great thing about this is it has a <clears throat> fully articulated screen. So you can see yourself while you're filming. That's amazing. I, I, I myself wanted that. SD single slot, slot is it's a problem. The only thing I wouldn't use this camera for is sports. Other than that, it's an all around nice camera. Let's move on to Nikon Z6. Here are the stats. Sensor, full frame. Megapixels, 25 megapixels. ISO, 100 to 51,200. Eye focus, no. Focus points, 273. Screen, tilting. Photographs per second, 12. Video, 4K with 30p. Full HD with 120p. Card slot, XQD single. Battery, 310 images. Price, $1,996. Okay, let's let's point out the good things first. It has a really fast SD card, okay? And it also has 12 photographs per second. This would be great for sports. It has a it's a fast camera. The problem here is if I'm photographing people with faces or people with eyes or anyone with eyes, it doesn't have eye focus. In this day and age, it's so important. Let's move on with the next camera. And last but not least, the Sony a7 III. Here are the stats. Sensor, full frame. Megapixels, 24. ISO, 100 to 51,200. Eye focus, yes. Focus points, 693. Screen, tilting. Photographs per second, 10. Video, 4K with 30p. Full HD, 120p. Card slot, SD dual. 
battery, 7 ton, 10 images, and price 1949 I didn't put a red cross, because it hasn't had that warning like this needs to change. The good thing, the really good thing about this, it carries two SD cards. That's great, because a lot of people are, have complained about that before. I would use this as an all-around camera, for everything, really. This would be my choice, but let's come to a conclusion and see all the stats with all the cameras. And the winner is... Honestly, there's actually a winner here. Sony a7 III. I can give you so many reasons, okay? I myself have used Canon, Nikon, and Sony. I'm not pro anyone. I'm just looking at the facts, putting it out there and going, there it is. You would choose Sony a7 III. Let's compare it to Nikon. Why wouldn't you use Nikon when it comes to photography, for example? It doesn't have eye focus. Trust me, eye focus is super important. Canon has that, yes. But it only ho holds one SD card. And the battery power is... Well, the Sony one has double the power. Other than that, they're close. But when it comes to video, I would still choose the Sony one, Sony a7 III. The reason being is, I haven't put this in, I'm sorry about this, but I'll point it out now. Sony a7 III has image stabilization, which means once you do video, you don't have camera shake. Once you do take photographs with a slow shutter speed, you won't have that shake within the camera. Now, Canon's excuse is, well, we have it in the lens. But if you're using other lenses that don't have image stabilization then you don't have image stabilization at all if you have you're not switching body to body you have one body five lenses let's say three of those lenses have st stabilization but the other two doesn't then you lose so yeah as an all-around camera i would go sony a7 III. that's been everything for me guys and if you want to subscribe, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.